Hello everybody, it's Violet from Journal Art Papery. Um, just on the edge of my painting the forget-me-nots the other day, I thought, why don't I do a journal with forget-me-not on the front of it? Um, I think it'd be a really nice idea for anybody who might um, just have somebody that they, like a, I don't know, a family heirloom type of thing. Anyway, so I'm just going to take you through a little bit of what I've done so far and I'll, I'll carry on as I create the journal and, and put a video together for the whole thing. But I was sitting here this morning painting. I thought, why am I doing this on without the camera? <laughs> so what I thought I would do is just show you where I'm up to at the moment. As you can see, I'm painting this uh, wording here and I've already put the little forget-me-nots there. Um, already but um yeah i'm only just started and so i will walk you through as i complete the journal but uh, i found this beautiful um oh dolly i suppose and um i stuck it to the inside of the journal this is going to be the inside isn't that beautiful and i love this blue i, I painted this onto a um, it's not watercolor paper it's just a, a sketchbook type paper I find that when you paint it with a really watery um, consistency it, it thickens up the paper a little bit so I thought what I would do is put it on the front of the journal um, you will probably uh, have done this before but I don't know if you can see it under there is the uh, just here and here is the uh, envelope that I used I used a, a large envelope and I placed inside on either side of the envelope I placed some cardboard so I've got a thick side here and a thick side here and the spine region is just really the envelope with the beautiful vintage doily here and the paper on top of it so I don't know I'm, I just experiment with a few things so that's what I came up with and then I thought I will just finish off this lettering here what I'm using is my little liner brush that I discussed the other day in my other mini painting of these uh, forget-me-nots and I'm just using I've done gold in lettering here and I'm just using the liner brush to go around the edge of it just so that I can bring out the um, the gold a little bit more my brush needs clean here bear with me yeah so um hope your day is going well so far and i uh, thought yeah i'll just do some of this on camera and then i'll get on to creating the rest of the journal i have some ideas about what i'm going to put on on the front of the journal but i'm not certain yet so i'm just playing around with my paint at the moment just to get this writing finished and um yeah it's a little bit tricky with the liner brush but i don't have a, a dark pen that i wanted to go around the edge so i'm braving it a little bit and doing it with my liner brush we talked about how tricky that can be if you're using the wrong consistency paint so i'm using a very watered down pain spray here and I did use water to actually water it down. And I'll just get this finished. And then once it's dry, I'll get on and, and start doing the actual journal. I'm not sure how I'm going to go, but I found uh, some bits of material in one of my lovely um, decorative mouldings that I've made. And I think I'm going to put quite a few of them through throughout the journal when I get started on the interior but for now I'll just focus on this writing I need that a little bit darker there hope you can see this all right if you're going to if you're a person who does any writing and you're not you know cool with the brush <laughs> just use a pen um, I don't have any fine liners here at the moment so that's pretty much why I'm using the brush it's taking me a little bit longer because you need a, a steady hand 
just pulling that paint down off there sort of I thought leaving the gold might be okay but when I looked at it, I thought oh it kind of gets lost a little bit because it's a, a rich gold and it's the Gersonia brand as I mentioned most times that I paint I use or pretty much all every time that I paint I use their products because I know it's just going to last it needs to be a bit darker I'm trying not to put too much water on the on the brush so that it overwhelms the fine line that's a bit better you can see that better all right so I'll just continue on doing this and then we'll get into the inside of the journal okay so I finished the writing um, what I've done instead of sort of chopping that off I th thought it might be nice just to fold it over and I'll glue that down but I just want to place a couple of things just to have a bit of a feel of what I'm going to do as far as I found this really nice old vintage lace so I want to put that on here somewhere but primarily I want the, the beautiful uh, journal to end up a very blue feminine journal that could be you know French or it might not be French but it could be um I think the, the blue is a, a nice color trending at the moment and it's very soft and and pretty and feminine so I want to keep it that way throughout so I'm not going to be putting uh much ephemera in it probably I'll I'll put some in and I've got some lovely bits of vintage wallpaper strips and I'll, I'll put them in somewhere but I just really want it not only to be a forget-me-not journal but um, I think yeah just a, a feminine journal so I'm just gonna pop this on the front here um, I love the color it's not too uh, vintage brown looking it's a lovely cream lace and I've got this little molding that I've made. I'm going to put her on the front. I love to incorporate these women into all of my journals. But this one I made, I made with glue. So the hot glue gun, uh, I put it in the molding, which is an IOG uh, mold. I think it's the frame mold uh, that you can actually get. I've got a, a, a link on my site here so if you just scroll down you'll see the link where I buy my IOD molds and stamps but I've just put a picture of this well-known woman <laughs> and I've crackled the the top of of that as well and put some gold around the edge over top of a, a dark background I try to keep it as simple as I can as far as the work involved in it but I thought you might be interested in the fact that I've put um, a few glue sticks I've just popped them into the mold itself and then just put it in the oven and hoped for the best and this is how it came out and so that's the back of it you can see that's hot glue uh, well glue that has formed the mold and it's quite a cheap way of doing it if you don't have any um, clay or anything like that you think about using glue so that and it's made it nice and light too so she's not really very heavy so I thought I'd, I'd put her on the front and uh, I just want to sort of have a look at this and see actually I quite like it like that I, I just like a little bit of crinkleness on the front so I might just place her like that so I'll glue her down now I'm not sure why I'm doing the cover first. Uh, I tend to do that just so that I can get a flow of the, the actual journal. It's just going to be uh, a small journal, like a, a narrow journal. It's not going to be a whopping big thick journal, but I'm going to put her in my shop at Journal Art Papery. I don't think I'll put her on my Etsy shop. I'll, I'm hoping to... Um, at some point ditch the Etsy shop and, and stick with my website at Journal Art Papery so I think I'll just put her in there for sale so if anyone's interested once I'm finished it'll be in there for sale probably by the end of this video and so 
I think that's what I'll do. So what I'll do is I might use my craft glue. Um, I could use hot glue, but I think I'm just going to use the craft glue to pop this one down. So I'll just glue that down. I like the way that's sort of folded over there, so I just want to keep that. I'll pop a little bit of glue here, just so that it's, that it's stuck down there. Maybe a little bit there. Don't want to overdo the glue thing. Just really enough to place it. And then I'll glue it down. Yeah, it seems a shame to ruin that <laughs> lovely background there. Uh, I think I'm going to use um, just a, a glue stick to place this in place because I don't want any glue coming through that beautiful linen material. So I'll carry on and just put this one down and then I'll glue that one. Obviously you don't need to see me gluing everything. And I'm a bit of a messy, messy kind of girl with the glue. But I just don't want to overdo it. So I'm just dabbing here and there so it's held in place. I'll just let that come around the edge to the back. Not sure what I'm going to put on the back yet, but I've got this going to be folding around the back as well as like it is on the front. Maybe I'll just put a little bit of glue there. And I'm just using this clear drying craft glue. I like it. It's not overly expensive. I think this one cost me seven bucks, which is pretty cheap. You get the name brand glues, they're exactly the same stuff and they just whack up the price because of the name. So that'll be enough glue on there just to keep it in place and we'll pop plenty of glue on her because I want her to stay around the front but I'm just not sure, I think I might need something something else to go around. Yeah, I've got a bit of glue there. So I'm just going to look and see what I've got some fabric I don't I don't want to make it too over the top colored on the front and maybe let's have a look at this one yeah just something a little bit extra there uh, you can see my design process there's no rhyme or reason to it it's just to have a look and see what looks good so I'll just put a little spot of glue under that just so that it doesn't take off. Once I put the lady down, I don't want her sort of floating on top. I want it glued down properly. And I'll just put that there like that. And I'm putting plenty of glue on the glue. <laughs> yeah, so this is, you know, I think it's pretty reasonable way of, of getting your moulds if you don't have paper clay. Um, I wouldn't be putting any mould into the oven but I know that the IOD ones are, are oven proof to a point. I think they have all of the information on the pack anyway. So I'll just sit her down right down there. There we go, just hold it there. So this is, obviously I'm not being symmetrical. I, I think symmetrical is okay for certain things, but it's not always best in design. I don't have to, I'm usually a symmetrical kind of person. I like to, to actually make sure that things are um, sort of, I don't know, just uniform, I suppose. I don't know what, what makes me do that, but when I design the fronts of my journals, I like to think it's just a little bit, um, aesthetically are pleasing with the design anyway. So I'll just pop her down, make sure she's stuck, and I'll get my Yoohoo glue. <coughs> Pardon me, I'll, I've got this one here. It's got the blue on it, so I can see where I'm going pretty much. Um, I had a whole pile of glue that I bought from uh, probably Kmart, or it might have even been uh, Kaisercraft, and I hadn't used it. And I hadn't had it for very long and the stuff just dried up 
and I thought I'm trying to use it and it wasn't working. I'm thinking, what's going on here? And it was just, you know, just the cheap, cheap glue didn't work. So I'm just hoping for the best here that I've got enough glue on there. You can see where it is, which is good for me. So I'm just going to pull that, pull that tight around here. And this is what I used on the inside, just so that the um, it didn't come through the lovely linen. And I think it'll keep it in place. I'll need some more there, obviously, but I'll I'll get the main part of it stuck down here. I'm pretty sure this is going to stay put. If you're worried that it won't, and you're just using the the glue a glue stick then you know use a bit of the other craft glue and just stick it around the edge of the lace so that it can't be seen on this side but I'm just gonna keep popping a little bit more glue here I didn't want to put it on the actual piece so I'm hoping that I get it enough in place so that it stays down and don't worry about that blue that's going to go away because the beauty of this stuff is you it's blue colored blue that disappears well it absolutely better disappear i'll be freaking out if it doesn't but um generally once it's drying it'll it'll disappear so that color won't be left there so i'll come back to that later but i'll do the other side so i plan on just this is the back obviously just plan on gluing this one down so I might just do that I'm still not sure what else I'll put on it but I'll just do this because I know this is what I'm going to do for this section here anyway I think it goes out a bit goes out a bit So you can see that the blue is starting to disappear. This is great for kids, and I think that's why they made it uh, with the blues, so that kids can see where they're gluing stuff, and and then it, when it dries, it dries clear. So you're not putting glue where you don't need to put glue, I suppose, is, a, is the point. Which I'll probably need more there. I don't normally use a glue stick, so I'm pretty glad that I found these. I was wanting a glue stick for something else, but I didn't end up using the glue stick because I was too impatient to, to wait to go and get one. I um, have to do all my own driving at the moment, <laughs> so I don't like to go shopping on my own. It's a bit strange, but that's the way it is. So when I was down at the local shop getting some groceries the other day I thought oh glue stick glue stick better go and get some and I came across these this particular one with the blue and I like it I think it's a really good invention it's good for me anyway so what I think I will do though is ultimately I'll go around just on this little border here and use this particular glue because I know it'll stay in place completely if this glue should age or come up for any reason it's not meant to, but you never know. So that's the front of the journal. I like it. And that's the back of the journal. And that's the inside of the journal. And we'll come up to the next part shortly. Right, I've used, I've finished off just uh, the front uh, as far as gluing it down and everything and showed you the inside and the back. Um, I'm going to leave the back like that, I think. I don't know whether I want to put anything else on there. Um, yeah, so what I'll do now is just basically have a look at the papers that I've picked out for this journal. And uh, some of the ephemera that I've got here is just basically uh, some embossed white paper. Um couldn't get any forget-me-not so I'm not going to keep with only the forget-me-not theme it's more or less the blue theme uh, so I'll put put that aside see what I'll do with that I'm not sure whether I'll use it in there or not but I've got a little bit of that and I've got some rose 
uh, embossed little strips as well so whether I use those or not not sure keep them aside um, this is just one of my uh, cutouts that I have at one of my die cuts that I sell in my shop with the forget-me-not pattern on it so I think I'm going to use that in there somewhere as a little tuck spot which is what I created them for and this design here is very French uh, frame design as well so I like that idea uh, these are some of the uh, papers that I've um, put together and I sell these in my shop as a digital download but what I've done instead of making uh, keeping the the size of the paper which is an A4 and I'll just show you the difference obviously it's a big difference I'm not going to use this one in the journal I decided I've I kind of should have printed maybe across printed two of them across ways uh, but I've made a little card out of that design instead and I'll use that in this journal and this paper is awesome I love it it's your old computer paper that I think it's it's not so much an A4 size um, it could be a letter size I'm, I'm not really certain I haven't measured it but what I came across in an op shop was bundles and bundles I mean literally thousands and thousands of sheets of this paper and it's it's not a, a bright white it's like a bit of an off-white color and all I needed to do was pull you know how it used to go through the old-fashioned computers printers and they had the strips on the side with the little dots all the way through and it just connected into the printer so that's what that is I've taken the strips off it and I'm, I use that and I use a lot of that when I do these um, papers as well this is not just copy paper this is that same paper that I've pulled the pull the side strips off and I've put it through in a tea stain uh, uh, yeah I think it's a tea stain on this one so I've got a few pieces of that in there but the paper itself is just really beautiful it feels really nice and and when it uh, gets wet for tea or coffee staining or Parisian staining as I like to do most of the time it really thickens up the paper and makes it a lot more sturdy so I tend to use that in my journals but these little cards I've just really downsized some of the the prints that I sell as a download digital download in my shop at Journal Art Papery this one I, I've just put a, a lovely lace design on that one as well and I've made it a little bit longer so I can do some work on here I'm not sure what I'm going to put on there but these are all going to be journal cards and pieces that I'm putting into the actual journal. This is again another small design of a large piece of paper which is one of my printable downloads and again the the beautiful uh, forget-me-not picture and um, I'm going to use that as a journal card in here. I've also got my gorgeous little pieces that I did the other day um, got them ready to go and I'm going to probably put about you know two or three or four maybe in this particular journal I'll figure out how I'm going to make the ephemera now what I'm going to attach that to but that's for another another video so I'll do all the ephemera in the next video uh, that I put on um, this is just some beautiful watercolor paper that I've uh, watercolored in some gorgeous blues and greens and I when I found this this morning I thought that'd be perfect for this particular journal so I'm going to incorporate that somehow probably make it ephemera wise uh, so yeah the back of the page is pretty plain although that's a bit of a mess there <laughs> but that doesn't matter I'm going to use it somehow to make the ephemera I think something you know it'll go perfectly so we'll just do that in the next one I found a couple of my old stained dressing bags and I'm going to also incorporate those in a minute I'm not sure how I'm going to do it yet but we'll work it out as I go I suppose and this is just my my tea stain paper of the belts one two three four five six actually I think it might be coffee because it's it's quite dark for my tea staining uh, tea staining tends to be a little bit lighter for me so that's going to be the plain sheets that I'm putting in it and I found this sheet and this is again that same paper and it's 
probably a little bit crooked with the lines. I don't know if you can see that on there. But I found that and I thought, yep, I'm going to put that in. Now, here's some of the, the digital downloads that I have in my shop uh, in the wallpaper section. This is the, the blues. Um, it's got a lovely creamy background and this printed up beautifully, I thought. The other side is the clean, the clean side. What I'm thinking I might do instead of leaving it all that size, what I might do is cut that in half. Um, maybe cut it that way and then put it in like that so it'll come out as a page like that. We'll do that in a minute anyway. But um, I think I probably won't keep them all. The A4 size, again, another design in that same group. Digital downloads, they print up so beautifully because when I make them, I create them onto a, real, a 600 DPI so that they can be resized to many sizes, probably an A3 even, and it'll still look stunning. So these are the, the wallpapers that I'm going to be putting in uh, to this journal. I love the, the blues and the yellows. I think it, it just matches really perfectly with the cover. And um, yeah, just we'll put those in. This one here, printed by mistake. Normally it's stuck together like that in the digital download section with the other papers. But what I did was instead of printing it onto paper, I printed it onto sticker paper. <laughs> so I figured what I'll do is I'll... I might use that in another journal, I might not, I might use it in this one, but I've just got to work out what I'm going to do with that yet. But that's the sticker paper side, but it'll stick beautifully, make a nice little journal cover, I think. I love that wallpaper. It's just really muted tones. I'll use that. But with this, what I might do with this is, um, where are we? Get a piece of paper here. I've just embellished the page so that's just going to stick down to there so I might just do that now uh, pull it apart sticker paper when I do my stickers I mostly do die cut stickers uh, so they're not always kiss cut kiss cuts quite a lot easier to to remove from the, the backing sheet but I tend to like die cut stickers myself and um, but yeah they can be a little bit tricky to to get to the edge of of the stickers so really what I'm doing here is using this like a type of laminate <laughs> but putting it down just to decorate the page and pull it off as I go so it's easy easy to do I'll just get my trusty scissors Just trim that down because I don't want that little piece left over sticking sticking to anything. Just it's sticking to my scissors. Okay. Alright, so that's a job sorted for that. I just didn't want to lose this paper because I love it. I just think that it's just I just love the the way that it's delicate and it's not uh, not so sharp an image and I think that's just the beauty of the vintage wallpaper so there we go that'll look absolutely gorgeous with that cover I don't know whether I should maybe put that on the first page and put it around that way let's have a look uh, yeah I think I'll do that so when I put them all together that's probably how I'll go. So I'll just cover that back there so that it's not bent the other way, not folded the other way. Okay, so that's just one page. And I've, I've been thinking about how I'm going to attach these. Normally I put a, a three, three pronged um, holes in, in them and I sew them into the cover so that they're nice and sturdy but I'm wondering this time I think I would like to put uh, maybe just one hole here and one hole here just so that I can run some gorgeous um, seam binding through it and attach them that way that way I can always add to the pages so I don't have to be stuck if I sew it in I'm less likely 
to pull it apart and add more pages in. I'm thinking of, I was going to do two signatures, so I'll see how thick it'll go. But this is not a large journal. This is quite a, a tidy, a sturdy journal cover. So I want it to be um, quite a lovely, you know, take away with me kind of journal. So we'll just um, put that aside for a minute. But what I need to do is figure out how I'm going to arrange the pages here. So I don't like them to be, because I'm going to put ephemera in after I actually put the pages together. I'll just, you know, figure out how I'm going to do the pages at the moment. So this one here, uh, let me see. I think I might take that, cut that down the middle and make that a smaller page. So I'll just put that aside, bend that over. Make it nice and even. Now I'm going to just use my ruler so it's not a an extreme cut and just oh, let's go this way. And hopefully I'm not using scissors without using scissors. But I think I figured it would be nicer having just that piece in that when I put my pages together I won't put that next to that one but I might use that one should it go that way I don't think it really matters which way it goes the pattern is yeah I like the roses at the front oh This one in next. This, uh, yeah, I'll just put it around that way. Well, I like that one next to that one, so I'll put that one in there. Put this one in here. And this one here, I figured I was going to actually chop it as well, but. I just don't want the roses everywhere, so I might, might leave that one and chop another one. Let's put some lined paper in. Might just take some of that off there. It's not so perfect. not one for colouring up the edges with um, ink either. I don't tend to do that an awful lot. If I colour them up, I'd normally do it with uh, with a bit of paint so or just dip them into the, the tea stain or the Parisian stain mix. So I'll just pop that, I don't know, maybe pop that in there just so that it's going to break up some of the plain paper. I know you'll obviously do it the way you want to do it, but um, I'm not going to put ephemera paper in here. I'm just going to put the the pages that you can actually write on if you want to. Uh, even on here, I would write on here. Um, ultimately, I'm going to stick stuff down onto these. So I'm yeah, just sort of really getting it sorted out as far as how I might like it to look in the end. I think I'm going to end up with two signatures and that one can just go perfectly in the middle there. And the next page I'll keep, keep the plain tea stain. Let's have a look. What have we got? I'm just mindful that I don't want it being too thick. I might need to make the two signatures for that. A 
this one I'm going to take in half again, so I'll just move that aside. My trusty ruler. Only because the design tends to be going this way rather than the other way. So if I put it in there and like that, it's going to be on a side design. Uh, next time I use this design, I might um, put a couple of sheets on the one A4 print. Okay. So you can, as you can see, it's just going to be lovely blues and, and pale yellows and. Just use one of these bags here. Um, I think I'm going to put some ephemera on this one. So whether I put it on the side or not, maybe maybe I'll attach it attach it there so that that's going to stick nicely to that back sheet. And I'll be putting some stuff on here to decorate that. Okay, so I don't need to put that in, just need to be mindful of putting it in when I'm ready to put it in. So let's have a look. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so that'll be one signature. It looks like I'm going to have to figure out another signature. Well, let's have a look and see if it'll be too bulky. Mm, maybe not. By the time the ephemera is in there, it's probably just going to maybe be a bit too much. Mm, I might keep adding to that and let's just make it one big chunker. Make it a chunker of a signature. So uh, let's see. I want that as the front piece, but I don't want to overdo the same designs. I've only printed up a few of a few of these um, pages because I didn't want to have too much colour in it. I tend to put the colour in when I put the ephemera in but um, I'm yeah, just mindful I don't want this video to be absolutely too long that you're bored to death. Um, let's have a look. What have I got here? That one. Mm, I should maybe print it up another picture. Doesn't matter. We'll put that one in and put it that way. So I'm just going to stagger them up the top and down the bottom. I'll figure out what I'm going to do when I start decorating it. Mm, might just put that one in with it as well. That's the signature. Uh, let's go one more for just because. I love this paper, it's so crunchy. That'll do. That's it. <laughs> okay, so that's going to be the signature without the actual ephemera, and I think that's big enough. So I might get started on how I'm going to put it in. All right, so what I'm going to do is because I'm going to put a hole here and a hole here, I'm going to use my cropper doll, or you can use any any other one of these type of um, doodads that actually put holes in things. Uh, I'm just going to put it down to the, you can move these down, I can get it moving. So that'll, that'll give me, looks like an inch there, so an inch in from the edge on each page and um, just going to make the holes. I'll do it 
on here on the cover first and this could be a bit tricky only because I've got the I'll do the cover first and then I'll do this so I need to have that out of the way so I don't put a hole in in the bottom of the lacy oops wrong one okay I'm gonna try and get get in the middle actually I should just have a good look at that so where that crease there is looks like it's going to be the middle so I'm just going to go all the way in unfortunately I've got this here in the way so I don't want it taking away from the length oh, what am I going to do maybe I'll hmm, I think it's, it's stuck down so just need to tidy this up a little bit so that it's not going to hinder the length when I go in. That'll work. Okay, so in we go. These are great little gadget, this thing. I, I bought it not even knowing how to use the thing, but gee, it's, it's a good thing to, to have in your kit a little bit on the pricey side but if you're doing this a lot then it's pretty much worth it so see i've gone right up to the edge here and i'll put the hole there so it's all done now hopefully i didn't wreck my little bit of doily here let's try and get it out okay beautiful all good so i'll go the other end i think that's almost in the center I don't suppose it really matters because these these are actually uh, vintagey looking so we don't maybe I'll just leave that one there we don't need to be absolutely perfect I don't know if I explained enough earlier get that little piece out of the way um, when I made the journal cover I used a uh, one of those ugly envelopes that you get the orangey yellow color is not my bag that's for sure I just don't like the color very much so what I did was I gessoed each side of it just to give it a little bit more strength and then I do I mean all, all in now so I hope it's in the right spot just make sure okay so yeah what I did was I just sewed each side and then I placed two bits of card one either side and um, so this is giving it quite a nice strong strong cover you don't have to put the card in it I just did it because it firmed up the cover a little bit for me so all right we've got the holes there and that's going to be okay trust <laughs> okay so when I that's how it's going to end up so you're not going to see that anyway because the I think I'm going to use seam binding across there because I'm going to put just a, a sari silk tie around it so now that I've done that what I'll do is just come back and on each of these sheets I'm going to do them individually just so that I get it um, if I went through all of those at once it could end up a bit of a mess so I'm just going to do each of them individually and um, all you need to do is the same same deal with with what I did with the cover so I'm going for the scent oh, just let me see so I'm an inch in I'm going for the center that's going to put a hole there do the same for the other end so I know that when I'm actually going to put it into the cover itself, it's all going to be even where the holes are concerned at least. Uh, it takes a little bit of time, but... Okay, sheet one. I know this is going to take a minute or two, so bear with me and we'll get, get through it. And Getting to get rid of the, the actual paper out of each. I don't suppose it really matters, just so long as it's in the right spot. Which looks about there. 
Okay, so with this one, um, I might just grab these three and do them together because I don't want them all uh, the same height. Obviously, this one is not going to get the hole up here, but we'll go in, maybe push it up a little bit. side that's going to be missed but these two are going to make sure my holes line up down there come on oh, all, all thumbs okay that's that I might do my computer and I've got email coming in. Sorry about that. I might do a few just so that it's not going to take too long altogether. i do a couple at a time. It's not going to hurt. And again, you know, they don't have to be absolutely perfect. Just so long as all the holes line up, I don't care. <laughs> you can see that's a little bit of a wider sheet. There just by a little bit, so just make sure I keep that hole up the top in place. Oh, got another little cheap monkey under there. Oh well, that's all right. I forgot about that one. All right. I don't normally do tutorials on this type of thing but I figured I started with the with the cover so I may as well finish and see that little blue one there is lined up nicely but um, it's not lined up down the bottom because it's not long enough obviously again I might do these two together as well because I want up the top and I'll go down the bottom with this one. The ephemera, I think, is what makes the journal complete. As I said earlier, I'm not going to be doing the ephemera in this video, but I will do it soon so that you can see how the journal turned out as well. But I'll, I'll do a video with the making the, the ephemera. I tend not to uh, use absolutely vintage ephemera because um, I have the idea of chopping up beautiful pieces. So usually I'll print up things and that's why I made those cards earlier so that I can just use those with some of the the wax seal ephemera I made the other day and I love using glassine bags in my journals I think they make brilliant pockets uh, I think that's how it went there cool bananas alrighty ready to rock and roll so the colour of the seam binding that I've chosen is um, I use the Hug Snug crazy name but anyway um, I use that and I think I'm going with this colour because even when I put a white um, I've got this gorgeous creamy white seam binding to go a uh, silk sorry silk rather to go around the journal it's so beautiful I love it it's a wide one so that's going to tie off the journal but I think that will work really nicely with it won't be outlandish so what I need is enough, enough length to actually be able to have a tie when I put this in. So let me think, what will I do? What will I do? Um, maybe I'll go longer than I need. It's always an easy option and then I can um, chop it off if it's too much. Now, the other thing that I'll do, rather than try and shove this through all the layers, I might just grab a bit of spare washi tape that I, 
I'm gonna pull my washi tape off and it goes a little bit funky on me. I usually just grab it and put it up on my shelf so that I can, I'm just giving the, the actual seam binding a sturdy end, you know, like a shoelace type of thing when you've got that stiff end of the shoelace and this is just junk um, and bits of my beautiful washi tape that I designed. That on the end so that's gonna get through the holes easier okay so uh, I'm not sure whether I want the tie at the back here or the tie if I put the tie at the front of the journal like for instance if I put it in here where it all ties off it'll be then easier probably to add paper to the journal if you if you need to add more pages in so I think that's what I'll do righty so we're just gonna go through the each piece you can see that's helping me with the washi tape on there helping to pull through the paper easily because uh, seam binding is quite a fray job <laughs> it'll fray and um, you know because it's got a soft end it's not going to go through easily so if you're going to do this do that way much easier you find you won't have too much stress that way okay I'm going through. it's an easy way to do it um, I, I do mostly do my um, journals with stitching as far as uh, the, the seam uh, towards the cover I usually sew every signature in. I had a feeling I just did that upside down. Doesn't matter. Okay, so just be mindful that that's the top because <laughs> I want that down the bottom. I think, oh, did I do I did, no. Yeah. Okay, I think this page is upside down. So I'll have to just take that one out. before I do it again. A little cray cray. And a bit of a crazy moment. Um upside down. Okay, so this is this is the right way up. Just making sure with my designs on my paper here before I go ahead and ruin everything. Yep, that's perfect. The bird's up the right way. Lovely like I bought one. Excellent. So all I need to do is get back and make sure I've got the right end <laughs> going through. Okay. So that needs to go through that section there. You know what I should have done? I should have done this end first so that I'm not having to pull it around. Doesn't matter. Now I'm going to put it onto the cover. So all the pages are in place. Just bring the cover over <coughs> and pop it through here. Easy as. It's just going to go through there. It'll tie these into the journal cover for me. Just want to pull it around and through. Make sure I've got enough. Mm, that might that might be enough. A little bit more just for good measure okay so this is coming around the back of the journal uh, the journal cover rather and so it's, this is such an easy way to do it actually it's just like a no so <laughs> lazy lazy person's journal like me uh, so there we go just want to fix that so now what I'm going to do is probably put something on here, maybe some lace or perhaps add some gems or or whatever, just so that you don't have that gaping hole there on its own. Or you could put a few bits through and we'll work that out anyway. Once I'm finished all the ephemera, I'll think about it once, once I see what it looks like in the end. So yeah, just going through each piece of paper individually. 
when I sew my signature thing, I'm always worried that I'm missing pages or getting the holes in the wrong spot and I'm going to have to measure it a little bit more thoroughly so this is yeah much easier way to do it and I like the idea that you can just undo it and add pages to it if you need to. I love the yellows and the blues together. That one's a, a miss on its own which is fine because all of these pages will hold that in place anyway. Yeah, so get your, keep your shoelace thing in mind. I mean, it's not, not tidy, but it's giving it a little bit of a sturdiness there. And that'll come off in a minute once I'm done. Really there. Okay. So it's all sitting nicely there. I don't want to pull it too tight because I'm mindful of the cover. I don't want to tear the outside of the cover, although it is a bit sturdy anyway, so it should be fine. So I'm just going to simply tie. No. I'm not going to put it right in the centre, but I'm going to tie it here. I'm going to knot it. And these will hang down, these little extra bits. I don't think I'll cut them. I'll just knot that. So, in the end, I'll just pull that off. I'll cut it off. Oh, let's see. There we go. All done. Alrighty, so yeah, I like that. So that's going to be basically the, the centre of my journal until I get all the ephemera done. I don't want to cover up this too much. I probably won't cover that design there because I just love that. And this is the blue underneath. It's just really that lovely hand-painted paper coming around. But I love the way it sort of captured that little design in the, in the um, doily. The same again here with the back. Okay, so that's just how the start of my journal. And when I do the ephemera, I'll come back and do a video on making the ephemera. So hang in with me if you want to see the outcome of the journal. And yeah, thank you again for watching. And yeah, feel free to have a look at my website at Journal Art Papery and see if there's anything there that might be useful for you in your journal creations. Bye for now.